Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on minimum increment to make array unique. And in this one, you're given an integer array nums, and in one move, you can pick an index and increment a number by one. And you want to get every number to be unique, so you want to return the minimum number of moves for that. So in this case, you would just turn the two into a three, and that would be unique, and that's one move. And in this, uh, they tell you that in six moves, you can get this thing. So you turn this two into a four, which would take two moves. This one stays the same, two stays the same. You turn this into a five. That takes um, four moves. And so you have total six. So you can see from these examples that like, <clears throat> if a number can stay the same, the best thing to do is just keep it the same. So really the problem is when you have duplicates, right? Like if every number was unique, you can just keep them all the same and that would take zero moves. So the problem is you have no duplicates. And so it's, it's a little bit intuitive to figure out what you need to do, but essentially let's go through that. So let's say we have this example two. And the easiest thing to do is to sort the array because you want to, you want to like know which number is available. And if numbers are all over the place, then it's going to be hard to tell. But if we sort the array, in fact, you probably don't need to sort, you probably do the counting sort again, but I usually don't do that. So, um, so anyway, uh, here, uh, I think we're missing one. Yeah. Okay. So is that six numbers? Yep. So in this case, basically what we could do is we could say like, okay, Let's just see what's the first available number. So the first available number is a one and we have a one. So like for the first number, we can always just leave it as is. So we have a one. So we'll write down like, okay, we have a one. What's the next available number? Well, the next available number would be a two, right? We can just add one to like your available number. So we have a two available. And basically the idea is you want to keep the numbers the same. And then for every number that you have to change, you want to change it. You're like, you want to make it go up as little as possible. And it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's say you're trying to get the numbers two and three and you have one and two. It doesn't really matter if you change this one to a two and then this two to a three, that would take two operations or you change the one to a three directly. So if you're making, if you're changing two numbers and you're increasing them both, like it doesn't matter which one you, you change. So knowing that, so basically this first number you can keep the same and then the next available number is a two. So then we can go to the next number and we can say, okay, well, the, our, our next available number is a two and we have a one. So if our next available number is a two, how many operations does it take to turn the one into a two? It takes one operation. So we'll leave one there. So this one will get transformed into a two. And now our next available number is three. So then we go over here and we say, okay, this two is not available. We need to make it a three. So that takes one or more operation. So now we have two total. And now our next available number is four. So we'll make this a three. And now we'll say, okay, so we need to make this a four. So basically you can kind of figure out, um, and this won't necessarily always be the case where you want to make it like this. It's not always going to go into like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's definitely examples where it's not going to happen, but essentially our next available number is a four. So we have a two. So we want to turn into a four. That's going to take two operations. So now we took four and then, um, our next available number is a five. So we can turn this three into a five. And so then, um, so that will take uh, two operations. So we have six total that we used and our next available number is a six. And then this is the other case. So you're basically gonna have three cases. You're gonna have the case where um, number equals available number, right? If that's the case, it, there's no moves to do and then you just increase the available number by one. Then you have the case where number is gr uh, less than available number then you just turn your number into the available number and you increase like for both of these, you don't like for this one, you would turn the number into the available number. But for both of these, you would just make the available number go by one. And then you have the case where number is greater than available number. And so this available number is the first available number that's available. So if the number is greater, so if like a seven's avail available, we have a nine. This means seven plus is available. So then if we have a nine and everything seven plus is available, we can just leave this as is and make the available number the one after this. And so here, like I said, we turn this into five and this is, this is where we hit our last case. So our smallest available number available is a six, we have a seven. So then we can just leave it as is because six plus is available. And then our next available number would be eight. And so these are basically the cases. These two are kind of like in one thing that you can write. And this is the other one. So this is the, this is the most efficient way. Um, you could do some other stuff where you have like a set of numbers you've used and like 
which ones you haven't used and just keep increasing the available number by one. But essentially this is kind of the idea. You just go to every number and you just check like, is it available? If it is, just leave it as is and then increase by one the next available. If it's less than the available number, then you just make it turn into the available number. And if it's greater than the available number, you can leave it as is as well and just make the available number one after that. And that's basically all you need. So let's code that. So we can sort our numbers. We can have a result. And we can have this available number. Available or something or for avail. Um, OK. And we can make this num0 because the first number is always available to start out. Then we can just uh, loop through numbers. And we can say if the number is less than or equal to available number, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn the number into the available number. So if it's equal, you're, you're not going to like turn it into it. But And we don't need to actually turn them into it. But the number of operations it's going to take is in any if it's equal or less than, you're going to want to turn the number into the available number. So you will add available minus num is the operations that will take and available will increase by one because this number is now taken so the next one available is the one above that and the other case is the number is less or is greater than the available number and if the number is greater greater than the available number we can leave the number as is because everything greater than or equal to the available number is available but now your next available number has to be bigger right so you can never make numbers decrease, you have to make them increase. And because it's in a sorted order, like let's say we have a nine and our available number is six plus, that means our next available number will be a 10. Because you can't like all our numbers later on will be nine or bigger. So we can't like decrease. So even though we had to skip a few numbers, like even though six, seven, eight were available, we're never gonna be able to use those because if we're on a nine, everything else is gonna be bigger. So then here the result is nothing, but available is gonna increase here because we're gonna leave our number as is and the next available number will be the one after that. And so this is, I think this is like the best solution with sorting. Uh, we're, we're doing very efficient stuff. For every number, we can just calculate the next available number in O of one, which is kind of good. So we don't have to like go through every single number or have a set or any of that kind of stuff. So um, then we can just return result. And that's it. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Um, let's see. I'll put zero expected one. Okay. So let's just double check that this works correctly. So our first available number will be zero. And then the number will be, it'll be this case. Um, this will, uh, this will add zero. And then if the next available number will be one. Then we hit a two. And then for the two, the number will be greater than available. So we're going to go to this case. And uh, yeah, and available. Oh, oh, sorry. So this shouldn't be available plus plus. This should be available equals num plus one. Because like I said, if a six is available, but we're at a 10, um, the next available number should be 11 because we're going to be increasing order here. So it should be this, not available plus plus. Okay, there we go. I guess they added this like new analyze complexity. Okay, that's kind of cool. Everyone's adding AI stuff. All right, so here, um, this is and log in. <laughs> yeah, I guess like it'll do it for you. And then our space uh, it does a space two of oh, one. Okay, so now it's pretty easy to. I guess you can double check all your stuff. I'm I'm curious how accurate this is going to be. Um, I don't know how this works, but if this actually works well, that'd be kind of cool because you can like guess what you're at and then you can double check it, which is kind of nice. I mean, you could also, you could have already done that before. You can just like chat GPT this thing and then ask for complexity, but now it's kind of convenient because it's in there already. Um, but yeah, it's going to be all there, all there is for this one. Hopefully it made a lot of sense. And if it didn't, please ask questions. And if it was helpful for you, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.